Hello my, oops, hair is in my face. Hello my friends, welcome back. Today we are gonna talk about all of my weird, bizarre, crazy first trimester cravings. That is right, your girl craved some strange things. So if you're interested in a fun video about all of my cravings, what I've been eating, and all of that fun pregnancy stuff, then just hang on and please keep watching. Okay, so let's take it way back. The first two weeks after I found out I was pregnant, I was really self-conscious of gaining weight. I know my sister went through this too. I didn't have any cravings. I was really nauseous and I was really focused on eating as healthy as possible. I was eating very limited carbs and that worked for me. <laughs> Probably less than two weeks. And then all of a sudden baby was like, oh no, uh-uh. We're not doing that, I need some food. And it was turn on the waterworks. And I felt as if I needed carbs, crappy carbs. Like the crappier the carbs, the better. I remember one time I went to Adam and I was like, I need chips like now, like right this minute, we need to get chips and guacamole, like now. And if I didn't eat carbs every hour to hour and a half, I would feel the worst. Sour stomach, there was this burning that came from my stomach up through my esophagus, <laughs> my esophagus from my stomach up through my esophagus, and it was terrible. And if I didn't eat right then and there, I would have to lay in the bed for hours, feeling like I was gonna throw up, but I don't really ever physically throw up, so it was just kind of this awful situation, and I gave in to my carbs. At that point, I didn't really crave anything, but everything I ate at that point, except for a couple of aversions that we'll get to, everything tasted like the best thing in the whole entire world. Not that I'm a dramatic person or anything, but I remember one day I went in the cabinet and we had salted nuts. I craved salt. There was not enough salt in the world in the beginning. Actually still, I've been craving so much salt, but along with sweet cravings too. As time progressed, we'll get there. But I opened a jar of cashews, salted cashews, and I was eating them and they just tasted so buttery and creamy and salty. And I turned to Adam with a mouthful of cashews and I was like, this is the best thing I ever tasted. And my cravings would go like this. And it's been like this so far. I would eat something like cashews. They were the best thing I ever tasted. And I would want to eat them all day, every day for about two days. And then I wouldn't want them anymore. Then they were nasty to me. So I know you guys can relate, but salty, 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 carby. That's what I wanted. The first real craving that I got was for my brother's pizza. So my brother owns a pizzeria. They are very well known for their pizza. When I lived in New Jersey, I worked probably five miles, if less, from the pizzeria. And everybody would always come to me and rave about it. And I would tell them, I'm like, it's literally the best pizza I've ever had in my life. I know I'm biased, it's my family, but I'm telling you I'm not making it up. And then they would come back and be like, you're right, that was good. However, I was formerly vegan for three years and I added back in fish, seafood, and eggs a couple of years ago, but I still do not eat meat or dairy. Side note, don't come for me in the comments. My doctor is totally on board and perfectly fine as long as I'm eating fish, the not high mercury fish, and seafood, and eggs, and other proteins like organic tofu. And there's other things that have a lot of protein like chia seeds and things that you wouldn't think of. I'm gonna do a whole what I eat in a day, first and second trimester for you guys, because I think you should see how I eat because you guys always ask all the time about my healthy journey, especially while I'm pregnant. But anyway, I craved a slice of my brother's pizza like it was nobody's business. Like I dreamed about this pizza. Now the thing with my cravings is I will crave things that I don't eat. And that doesn't mean that I won't eat them. But for example, one night I craved a juicy hamburger. I don't eat meat. So the thought of the smell of trying to eat that meat grossed me out so much. Like the thought of a juicy hamburger sounded so good to me, but the thought of actually taking a bite of that meat that I haven't eaten in five or six years grossed me out. So same kind of same thing with the dairy cravings, with the pizza cravings or the cheese cravings is that I will crave it, but then on the other hand, I'm like, but if I eat that, I will get so sick and it is so not worth it. So I don't really want it. Like in theory, it sounds good. For example, last night, you guys, I told Adam this morning that I woke up in the middle of the night laughing because I went to bed talking to him about food. Like I was like, oh, French fries. And then I told him, 
Jersey girls, please, please, please let me know in the comments if you know what disco fries are because North Jersey girl here was craving me some disco fries. And I'm like, Adam, I need disco fries. And he goes, what are disco fries? And I was like, oh, you say you're from New Jersey and you've eaten in diners in the middle of the night and you don't know what disco fries are? And I called my best friend and I was like, do you want to hear the unthinkable? And she thought something bad happened. I was like, Adam's never had disco fries. And she's just belted out laughing. They're cheese fries, diner french fries, slathered in mozzarella cheese and brown gravy. Oh, don't knock it till you try it. Anybody who's had disco fries, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, I'm talking about food, I'm talking about fries and disco fries, and even with fries, I'm like, that sounds so good, but then the thought of the way that I feel after eating all that grease and salt, blech. So that's how my cravings have been. But I woke up in the middle of the night laughing because I literally dreamed about a piece of deep dish Chicago pizza, which I've never had in my whole entire life, but it just sounds so good to me. I wasn't dreaming about going there with Adam. I wasn't dreaming about going there with my sisters or my friend or my friend Jess from Chicago. I just literally dreamed about a piece of deep dish pizza on a plate. And in my dream, I was like, mm, just looking at it, issues. The other thing is I would crave things and eat them and then make myself sick. So for example, one night Adam and I had too long of an afternoon and I didn't bring any snacks with me. So we went to Costco and we had gone to the park prior to this to work out, went straight to Costco just to grab a couple of things and we were starving. So on the shelf, we saw a bag of garlic flavored almonds and we broke into the bag. I mean, we were eating them because we knew we were gonna buy them, but we broke into the bag and they tasted literally like garlic bread. They were so, so good, but I overate them. We actually both overate them and we bought two huge bags of them and I got so, so sick. I didn't throw up, but I just got so sick. To this day, the bags are unopened in the cabinet. If anybody wants them, I'll mail them to you because we just can't do it. But the following day, he had to do a training at Hope for Prisoners and I had to work. He didn't have his license at this point. So I drove him there and I worked from the back of the conference room and then drove home. But knowing that I needed to eat every couple of hours, I packed myself some trail mix. Well, on the way home, that was probably the sickest I ever was during first trimester. I literally was just like breathing through, not having to pull over, like to find a spot to pull over to throw up. Adam pieced it together because the night before was those almonds and then the second day was trail mix, which is nuts again. And he said, nuts are so hard for your body to digest that I think you're probably just having some issues right now breaking that down, especially on an empty stomach. Genius. So the next thing that I remember craving after like all of that salt and my brother's pizza was a big one, was chocolate. And I craved these chocolate covered mangoes, dried mangoes that were covered in dark chocolate that I used to get at Costco. And I used to have these fun date afternoons with my nephew Nicholas, who when he was like six or seven years old, his favorite store in the whole entire world was Costco. And I used to keep him for sleepovers and I'd be like, we can go wherever you want tomorrow. We're gonna have a fun auntie date. Where would you like to go? Where's your favorite store? And he'd be like, Costco. In fact, if you look back on my channel, I have a Costco vlog with him in it. We had so much fun. We used to find these and I would buy the bag and he loved them. We would eat them while we were together and then I would send him home with the bag so I didn't have them in my house. I was craving these things so bad and I was on the phone with my best friend and I was like, Mare, I just, oh my God, the things that I would do for chocolate covered mango and they don't have them at my Costco. And two days later, they showed up at my doorstep, a huge bag of them. I'll put a picture of them there. Oh, but that lasted for a couple of days and then something with sugar. I do not like the taste of sugar right now. I called it table sugar when I was at the doctor the other day because we were talking about like gestational diabetes. I'm not even near getting tested for that, but he brought it up like that's when your testing is. And I said, you know, I'm really into health and wellness and I eat really, really healthy, but like, is there anything I can do to avoid gestational diabetes? Side note, he told me, no, it comes from the placenta. However, he said, you know, like don't go nuts with sugar and junky carbs and all that stuff. And I told him, I don't eat table sugar. I meant simple sugar. I mix it up with table salt. In hindsight, I'm like, I'm probably sounded like a moron, but I don't like the taste of simple sugar right now. If I crave sweet, I eat fruit. It's not because I'm trying to be healthy, although I am, it's because that will satisfy my sweet craving without adding sugar because the other kind of sugar, like the simple sugars, just 
oof, I, it grosses me out after I eat it. Like it tastes good in the moment for a second, but then it's too much, it's too strong. And the way that my mouth feels afterwards, it's so hard to explain, but it's disgusting. Like I have to brush my teeth right away. I wanna lay down, it's gross. It's helping me, it's working in my favor, but at the same time, it's weird, right? It's weird. So what I've been doing with chocolate, cause it's been my biggest craving is that I will sometimes add a little bit of cocoa powder. I spoke to the doctor about this, don't come for me. There is a little caffeine in there, but I'll add a little bit of cocoa powder into almond milk and make like a hot chocolate and sweeten it with something natural. Or I buy dark baker's chocolate, no sugar, totally unsweetened baker's chocolate. And I'll put a little bit of peanut butter on there and then I'll open up a date because they're sweet and they're natural and it's not table sugar or a fig or something like that and I will put it in between there to sweeten it up and I'll eat it kind of like a sandwich. It sounds gross, it's delicious. I got Adam turned on to it and that satisfies my chocolate craving but it's not chocolate with sugar that grosses me out. I also have unsweetened chocolate chips that help. I just learned the hard way that I can't eat those late at night because then I will stay up. My strongest cravings in the first trimester were probably between nine and 10 and a half to 11 weeks. We were in New Jersey when I had just hit 10 weeks visiting family for Christmas. Adam would run across the street from the hotel. There was a Starbucks. Every morning he'd run there, he'd grab us some coffee, something to eat so that I could get something in my stomach because if I don't eat right away, I start to feel sick so we could work out. I can't work out without eating while I'm pregnant. So he would grab something for breakfast and then he would come back. So one morning he comes back with the Starbucks, uh, I think it's called like the Southwest vegetable wrap or something like that. You guys. First of all, don't come for me. There's cheese in there. I said I don't eat dairy. I made an exception for this because again, it was the best thing I ever tasted in my whole entire life. I craved these for weeks afterwards and I went through a phase where I would eat one every single day after I ate my normal breakfast until, this is so funny, until Peter Mon did a video on his review channel have I told you guys how much I'm obsessed with Peter Mon? Like, I think we're best friends. My sister and I make believe that we're best friends with him. In real life, like, I want to go shopping with him for my baby. That is a story for another time. I am going to teach my baby how to be too much because of Peter. A story for another time. But he did a review, and he said that there were, like, five or 600 calories. And I was like, whoa, I need to slow down on those. I ate those every single day. I created them. Ugh. Also, while we were in New Jersey, I got this random craving for an acai bowl because I never had one out here, but I used to have them all the time in New Jersey. We didn't know that because of COVID, everything shuts down at 10 o'clock in New Jersey, restaurant wise. Like they can't serve food afterwards. Some places will do takeout, but really no. So everything's done. So I get this craving at like 9.45 at night and I go on DoorDash and I'm trying to find some place that's gonna deliver, that's either open or will deliver me acai. But at this point, now it's after 10 o'clock by the time I start finding places and there was nothing. And I was so heartbroken that I couldn't have this acai and I was craving it so bad that I started scrolling through my phone and just looking at pictures of acai bowls because I wanted one so bad. At that point, Adam had gone downstairs and he got me trail mix out of the gift shop at the hotel, which kind of satisfied my craving and didn't make me sick because of the nuts because that had passed a couple weeks before. But acai bowls, big craving. And now guess who craves them more than me? Mr. Clausen, because in my head, acai bowls and smoothies, I'm saving for special treats because a lot of sugar, liquid sugar going into your bloodstream really quick. And I'm really, 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 really fighting to avoid gestational diabetes because I am high risk at my age. My sister also had it with my nephew. So it's in our genetics. The only things that I had aversions to were oddly enough edamame, like still, the other day I thought maybe I could eat edamame, but out, like I do not want to touch the shell of it. You know how you pop it out of your mouth, out of the shell into your mouth? Like the thought of that makes me sick. I used to eat edamame almost every day. I learned this recipe where you fry it up with like ginger and red pepper. By the way, your girl cannot do spice and never in my life has spice affected me. But I'm at the point in my pregnancy where even a little bit of spice will trigger the absolute worst heartburn. And I was telling Adam yesterday, cause we went out and I got fish tacos. They were so good, but there was a little spice to them. And I was like, I've never ever had a problem with spice. Like the hotter, the better for me. So this is so odd and not welcome, but I, I can't right now. Anyway, so with those edamame, they had like red pepper and ginger and they were so flavorful and so good. 
but like even now talking about them I could get I, I feel like it's rising up and like ugh, bleh, like the spitties you know when you get that mouth watering before you get sick sorry the other day I was like oh maybe if I pop them out of their shells and put them on a salad or like sometimes I'll slice up green olives and eat the edamame with that it sounds weird but it's I like it I could do that, I think. But aside from edamame, like there'll be things that I would think about and be like, oh no. And in the moment, I can't think of anything specifically. Probably between like 11 and a half till probably like 12 and a half, almost 13 weeks, my cravings were more kind of what I saw in the moment. So like as I was writing, I have notes for with my sparkly pink notebook that somebody told me was maybe like a subliminal that I'm having a girl. <laughs> I wrote in here that the day I was writing out these notes, there was a commercial on for a sandwich and then all of a sudden I wanted a sandwich. I craved like a Wonder Bread sandwich. Now don't come for me, I will not eat a sandwich. I don't even eat meat, so don't worry about the deli meat for pregnant women issue. The things that I crave I don't like and I just see it, I'm like, oh, I need that. But thankfully it passes pretty quickly when the next, you know, when like somebody throws a ball in the other direction or another commercial comes on or somebody talks about a lemon poppy seed muffin and I'm like, ooh, that's what I want. It's more in the moment I want it and I let it pass. Since about 12 and a half weeks till now, which is about 13 and a half weeks, I constantly think about food. Unhealthily think about and talk about food. For the past two days, it's been like this. Like I was saying about the disco fries and then dreaming about pizza, but it's things that it passes. Like I don't feel like I will die in this moment if I don't eat this, where I feel like that's coming. I know it's coming, I'm just not there yet, thank God. Now my sister asked me when I sent her a picture of, it was me in my underwear with my 13 week belly and she's like, girl, you look better than me after I have a big old baby, what are you doing? Genuinely, I don't keep junk in the house, so if I crave something, I would have to go out and get it. By the time my lazy ass gets dressed, put on my shoes, or even thinks about doing that, like the cravings passed, I'm over it, I just need to eat something else. The other thing that's been helping me so much is like I said, I don't like the taste of sugar right now, so I'll eat fruit when I crave sugar, but I've been living on frozen grapes because it helps this burning feeling that I get in here. I still get a little bit of, I guess it's morning sickness. I'll get like the burning, hungry feeling. It'll go up into my esophagus, and now I am starting to get heartburn, which hopefully that means my baby has my beautiful curls or my sister Amanda, who I would not cry if my baby had her face. I always told her since like I was 12, I want my babies to have your face if I ever have them. But she has three times the amount of my hair on my head. She has like three or four times it. She's the most thick, beautiful hair. Adam and I both have fine hair. You just can't tell because I got a lot of curl going on. I've got a lot of texture in my hair. I'm hoping the heartburn means that the baby has a lot of hair. I know it's a wife's tale, but I don't, I mean, whatever. Anyway, the frozen grapes, the cold sensation is helping me feel so much better. And I've been exercising and really that's it. I mean, if I have a craving, I typically wait. It typically passes. I don't feel like I need anything, but if I do, then I will eat it. I am not restricting myself. My doctor's like, you know, I have never told a woman to restrict herself. My camera just died and talk about being lazy. I don't feel like going into the other room to get the battery. So we're just going to finish this on my phone really quick. My doctor told me he does not tell women to restrict. He's like, first trimester, when you're sick, I tell you to eat whatever you can keep down. And if that means to eat a carton of haagen a week, eat haagen if that's the only thing that you could put in your body and nourish your baby. Thank God I was not there. But he's like, honestly, don't limit yourself, but just try to make healthy choices, which I appreciate. And I do anyway. I did crave pickles. Oh, I forgot to say that. I craved pickles in the beginning when I was like, this is the best thing I ever tasted. I have not craved pickles mixed with anything weird. Pickles and hearts of palm, believe it or not, which is both that pickled type of, pickles or pickled, which are both, you know, that vinegary pickled type of, can I say pickled one more time? Which are both that vinegary, salty flavor. So I love that. I did not crave pickles with anything weird like ice cream. One of my girlfriends told me she craved pickles and strawberries and she still to this day, her kids are like 13 and eight years old, but she still eats that sometimes. But nothing like that with my pickles, just pickles themselves. But they have to be really sour and with a decent amount of dill, but not too much dill because dill repeats on me. 
<laughs> the trials and tribulations. I think that's it. I think, I mean, I touched on everything in my notes. I know that there was more that I wanted to say since I wrote these notes at 11 and a half weeks and now I'm 13 and a half, but I guess we'll do another video as time goes on. I'm on my phone, so like I'm not looking in the right spot. I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna do what I eat in a day because I think you guys will learn a lot from how I eat while I'm pregnant. Take what you want, leave what you want. Everything I do is run by my doctor. My doctor's really cool, a little bit lenient, understanding of what I like to do, how I like to eat, and he is on the same page with us. So that's it. If you're interested in my first trimester recap video, you can click that video there. If you're not already subscribed, please do that by clicking the circle there or the red box below. Give this video a thumbs up because it helps me out so much in YouTube. I love you guys. I need to go eat. Speaking of cravings, I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.